Governor stood applauding a 4-3 vote by the Board of Education that could dramatically alter the way charter schools receive their future funding. It's an issue that puts them at odds with state public school superintendent Joy Hoffmeister. Reporter Rory Taylor examines what's at stake for thousands of Oklahoma school children. Four years ago, the State Charter School Association filed a lawsuit against the Board of Education, protesting that charter schools don't receive the same per-student funding as other public schools. Joy Hoffmeister is the state superintendent and the chair of the OETA board. Though there had been attempts to settle it in previous years, um, there was not a standing offer to settle. And after the board agenda was posted uh, to have an update on this, a um, settlement offer came in um, right before the next day where this would be discussed. That discussion led to an approval of the settlement by a three to four vote carried by four STID appointed board members. Mr. Smith? Yes. Superintendent Hoffmeister? No. All right, that motion carries. In Oklahoma, public schools are funded first by local tax dollars and then supplemented with state funding. Charter schools, operating more like businesses, have not had the same access to those local tax dollars until now. Many of the parents don't understand that their kids are actually getting less funding for their education. Robert Ruiz is executive director of Choice Matters, a nonprofit program focused on helping parents match children with schools. He says the school board ruling is a step towards equity for charter school students. When I moved my son to the charter school, he didn't take all of his per pupil funds with him. He only took a portion of them, right? So he he left some of that behind in the school system that was no longer teaching him, right? And so the only thing that this decision may, you know, makes happen is basically that all of my son's uh, per pupil allocation will now be moving with him. And that includes not only brick and mortar charter schools serving specific communities, but also virtual schools like Epic receiving local tax dollars on a basis of per pupil allocation. But the state's two largest traditional school districts are concerned that the settlement is invalid, as they say they were left out of settlement negotiations. Both Tulsa Public and Oklahoma City Public said when this lawsuit was filed by the Oklahoma uh, Public Charter Schools Association against the state board, our two districts intervened and became at that time parties to this case. And so I don't understand how a settlement can occur when the two largest districts who are a party to the case have never been a part of a settlement. On Wednesday, Oklahoma City and Tulsa Public Schools filed a petition for a hold on the reallocations and a judgment on the legality of the settlement. State Superintendent Hoffmeister agrees the board's vote was inappropriate at best and illegal at worst. It's very clear in state statute and in the Constitution that the legislature has already spoken. This violates those provisions in the, the legislation around charter school funding and how charter schools um, are to operate. Um, there was actually law in 2006 that expressly prohibited what has now been uh, a, a vote and settlement by the State Board of Education. While Hoffmeister opposes the settlement, Governor Stitt fully supports it and says he did not discuss the settlement with any of the board members before appointing them. I think the board made the right decision. Um, if, if this pandemic has showed us one thing, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to education. Parents were frustrated, uh, but this issue particularly uh, has been a problem long before I was governor. Uh, but the charter school students and public school students, uh, we believe that they deserve uh, every access, every opportunity that, uh, that everyone else does uh, in the public school system here in Oklahoma. They're definitely filling a need. I think we've seen that you know, even more so over the past year, uh, because regardless of what information has, has, is out there and you know, uh, pending litigation or any of those things, um, they almost doubled in size last year. So obviously they're providing a service that is needed here in Oklahoma. But House Representative Andy Fugate says that funding alternative school choices isn't the state's job. If your child is in a school that is not performing, it's our responsibility as a legislature to fix that problem, not to provide an escape, not to provide competition, because you know what? Anytime you have competition, somebody's losing. And we don't want to be losing the children of Oklahoma.
With both the state superintendent and many lawmakers opposed to the board's decision, more lawsuits are likely, in addition to review by the legislature. We're going to see a number of lawsuits that arise out of this particular action by the board. Again, uh, it is the board acting beyond its authority uh, to choose how they're going to allocate monies that have already been statutorily constrained or in some cases constitutionally constrained. It's not their responsibility. They are unelected people just appointed by the governor. Rory Taylor, The Oklahoma News Report. Rory, thanks. And again, because the settlement opens up local funds for all charters, including virtual, it's expected to impact the budgets of every school district in the state.